Bethesda's Creation Club has had its ups and downs. While some have written the idea off as paid mods, some have embraced it as a mini DLC system. No matter what your stance on the Creation Club, Bethesda has steadily released content on the platform since its launch. As an avid Fallout fan and a person who fears missing out, I have made it a point to grab pretty much every item the Creation Club has offered up. Throughout my time with the Creation Club, I have had my share of disappointments. Most recently, the Commonwealth Mercenaries release. One idea I have always promoted that I thought Fallout had overlooked as a whole were VR pods. Since the first time we see them in Fallout 3 with the Tranquility Lane simulation, and later the Operation Anchorage DLC, I have always wanted to see more involving the pods. In Fallout 4, we get a taste with Kellogg's dream sequence, but it left me wanting so much more. I always thought it would lead to some pretty creative decisions if we were to get a couple of DLCs that use these VR pods. They really act as a failsafe to explore anything you want in the Fallout universe and beyond. In Fallout 3, we can visit a pre-war town, complete with active users that act as townsfolk. Tranquility Lane was seeming so familiar, but oddly off-putting. Of course, it was the fever dream of a mad scientist, an experiment of sorts, or maybe even just a twisted form of entertainment. With Dr. Stanulus Braun, the overseer of Vault 112, performing despicable acts to the dwellers and causing mischief in worlds of his own design. In Fallout 3's Operation Anchorage DLC, we get to experience the start of the Sino-American War in the Fallout universe, fighting through one of the biggest ground campaigns in the game's lore. Of course, all of this through the VR pod that the Brotherhood Outcasts needed access to, starting a mutiny upon completion. In Fallout 4, in what I assume are the same kind of VR pods, we travel through Kellogg's memories, diving deep into the mind of the person who kidnapped our son and murdered our spouse. Pretty heavy. I always thought more could be done with this concept. It's essentially a free pass like I said before. VR pods could take you to any place in the Fallout timeline, past or future, using the simulation plot. The VR pods could paint vastly creative scenarios without needing to worry about any lore breaks or out of place settings. While under normal circumstances, jumping to pre-war Alaska and fighting the Chinese army while one of the biggest wars in Fallout history starts to flare up doesn't really add up. With VR pods, you could fight in the battle at the Sea of Tranquility on the moon, something that is suggested in a mural in Fallout 4 but has no lore written behind it. That's a clean slate to run wild. Imagine going to the moon in a VR pod DLC, fighting in the battle and learning not only what happened there, but why it happened. Things like this could vastly be explored with this premise. With the newest Creation Club offering from Bethesda, we see this concept get put into action lightly. For 1,000 creation points, that is $10 American, but you have to buy them in packs and the cheapest pack that covers it is $15, so if you don't have anything else to spend that extra 500 points on, this update is pretty much $15, we get to build VR pods in our settlements. These VR pods allow us to go to virtual settlements with a variety of customizable settings. At the time of this review, four locations are available. And I'm not currently sure if Bethesda plans on adding more. Grid World, a completely flat building area which, as the name suggests, is just a grid. The Capital Wasteland is featured in the Capital Wasteland Mercenaries Creation Club offering, with only the exterior being accessible. An enormous desert island separated into four parts. And last but not least, the very aesthetically pleasing Atomic Crater map, all of which supply you with unlimited resources and act as a giant sandbox in different scenarios. The settings allow you to change a variety of things about your VR experience. You can start attack mode, which will spawn all hostile creatures you have placed spawn points for, with up to 30 being active at one time. The VR terminal will allow you to spawn VR settlers, up to 20, for the settlement, which can help fill the space and make your area seem more alive. It's important to note that some items can't be placed in these settlements. Some resource items and shops, for whatever reason, will be removed after you place them down. We can change the weather using the VR terminal, allowing us to set whatever mood we may want for the scenario we've built, adding mist or rain to make the place more spooky, or a rad storm for brevity. Changing the render mode, we can put a filter on the game camera, which can also help set the mood perfectly. Currently, black and white, sepia, and my personal favorite, dream sequence are available, with the latter adding a soft focus with contrast and a saturation boost. The VR terminal offers a great selection of background music to make your build sound right. Being able to change the music played while in the area is a great touch and not something that I would have thought that I wanted. I wouldn't have thought about it at all. This is an excellent touch to the update. We can quickly jump between each world offered through the VR terminal as well. 
which is nice. It would have been a little tedious to have to leave the pod altogether just to switch areas, though that is what I expected. I spent the majority of my time with the VR Pod Creation Club update building a Raider fight arena inside the building outside of GNR. I was impressed with how much the area allowed me to scrap. I was able to clear out the area thoroughly. The settlement build limit was huge. I had barely scratched the surface after building pretty much everything I could think of inside the arena. I believe this update would be made even better with mods that add items to the workshop, allowing for some really cool builds. The possibilities are endless. One mod I suggest in particular is the Settlement Electricity Overhaul, which adds a wireless switch to your settlement that produces 1000 electricity. The beauty behind this is that you need no wires to power pretty much everything in your settlement. A must have. Out of everything released so far on the Creation Club, I would say this update is the most bang for your buck. Sure, the novelty of this premise could wear off after a bit, but for those who like limitless building, this is a must have. I would love to see more locations added to this concept. Yes, these act as virtual settlements, they have no effect on your game and offer no advantage when it comes to the rest of your adventure. The sandbox idea is pretty fun when it comes to these settlements though. I'm pretty critical of Bethesda. I have to take my hat off to the mod authors in Bethesda for this one though. I had a lot of fun seeing what I could come up with. The canvas that Bethesda provides adds a fun break to the standard Fallout 4 experience. If you're on the fence about this update, I would say check it out. I recommend it for anyone who enjoys building in the settlement system. Bethesda gives us the tools to make creative scenarios with the creature spawn points. Though it is somewhat limited, it is a step in the right direction that Bethesda definitely needs right now. Whether or not it is worth the asking price is up to you, but what is offered wasn't a disappointment to me. I want to thank you all for checking out my review of the VR Pods Creation Club update. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like as it helps the channel out a lot. If you want to see more content like this, you can always subscribe so you don't miss any uploads. I want to thank my patrons and YouTube channel members. Your continued support allows me to make this type of stuff and I'm incredibly grateful. I would like to give a special thanks to my biggest supporters. Kim Jong-un, Fireflare, your typical redneck, Mark Train, and Jay of the Jungle. You guys are fantastic and I couldn't do this without you. If you want to see your name in these credits and support the channel more directly, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel links below. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you on the next one. It has been Mantis. Uh, I gotta testify, come up in the spot looking extra fly, for the day you die.